it could be that you want to use a such a transformer that is in fact a transformer made for 230 volts, 50 hertz. Primary is made for 30 volts. Sorry, the primary is made for 230 volts. The secondary for 30 volts. And could be that you want to use such a transformer um, to generate in a reverse way a high voltage. And that's very good uh, possible. Say you send in here uh, an AC voltage and on the on the secondary and then you receive on the primary a very high voltage and that voltage depends on how the transformer is made uh, uh, what kind of properties etc etc and also on the windings ratio and the idea of this video is how to find where the ideal resonance frequency of such a transformer is. And you can make it more broad, say you can also use ferrite transformers. They often work on a high frequency, say 60 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz, etc. etc. But in this video I only focus on say the reversed mains transformer. And I've made a test setup here. Uh, there is here a transistor that drives the coil, this coil on its um, primary, that's 30 ohms, DC ohms. And here is the secondary that is originally made for 230 volts, but I have connected here a diode to rectify the AC out and then we have here 3.3 microfarad non-polar capacitor and uh, that means that parallel to this capacitor we have a DC voltage generated by the uh, oscillator and the oscillator is here it's a function generator most important thing is um, about all these transformers, both this one and that one, where is the frequency where they can give out their maximum energy? So their resonance frequency, in a certain way the resonance frequency. And that's what is all about in this video. The schematic is of course always very important. This is the test setup and I want to tell uh, very quickly where it's all about. Uh, I use now 12 volts. Here is the transistor, the BD139. It drives the primary of the transformer and of course uh, keep in mind that now the primary me means the low voltage side. Anyway, it drives the primary protective diode um, and the key issue of it all is that we can send in to that uh, transistor different frequencies. So I've used here a, a square wave oscillator It sends out a square waves to the, uh, the transistor. That transistor is driven by square waves of all kinds of frequencies. And the key is to find the ideal frequency for such for any transformer. And this is the bias setting. Here the mark, uh, two microfarad capacitor, the voltmeter. We have here DC volts. And uh, about say this test circuit useful transformers have a, a primary winding of 10 ohm uh, to 40 ohms secondary winding of 100 ohms to 10,000 ohms but of course in this transformer it's only 3,000 ohms 
But when you have a real ferrite transformer, that's a completely other situation. These ferrite transformers were made uh, in the past for um, analog TV sets. Now, um, in all kinds of other circuits, uh, solar converters, etc., etc. But anyway, useful transistors. PD129, 2N3055, BD743C, though, that's important, um, the amplification factor, sorry, this amplification factor is okay, but this is a real high voltage transistor, and the MGE18004 uh, NPN transistor can handle 400 volts, but the, here the amplification is very, very low. So that's what I wanted to tell. Uh, you can use this transistor, but perhaps you have you need a more fierce, say, driving of the uh, transistor in this experimental setup. Back to the schematic, show it again, and let's see what this circuit can bring. Like I told, uh, we have here a square wave generator and key of the whole idea of this test setup is to send in to the transistor that drives the coil, that drives the, uh, the transformer, different frequencies and see where is the ideal frequency where uh, the transformer performs best. So has a good high voltage on its secondary. Uh, I have to say um, that in other kinds of circuits uh, such a transformer can be say very well uh, driven by a so-called needle pulse. That's not the case here. I don't have a needle pulse in this case but anyway. I only have a say a normal square wave. I want to put down the camera for a while because I want to show something. When you are poor or are a beginner you can use this circuit for a pulse generator that can generate all kinds of frequencies. For higher voltages, now it's for 12 volt, but for higher voltages you can use other resistor values, especially here, this one and that one, they are now. 330 ohms, but uh, for higher voltages change them into 1k, 1000 ohms or 1500 ohms, change the transistor, you don't use a BC547B but use a BD139, change these capacitors for other frequency bands. It's a very useful circuit. I've made it many times. So finally, let's look what this circuit can bring. Uh, I started my oscilloscope here, the Hantec oscilloscope. Uh, it is a very good waveform, uh, uh, sorry, not the scope as a waveform, but the feedback square wave generator as a good waveform. Uh, maximum output is a volt peak peak, so maximum here 10 volts. And of course you can see that it, that it really really happens. It's a good brand. It's a um, function generator of the 1970s, but anyway. Most important thing is let us search for the ideal frequency where this um, 
transformer, this transformer in this case, it's a very, very tiny mains transformer. I don't want to flip it because perhaps the crocodile clips uh, fall off, but anyway. I now give voltage to the circuit. And I use 12 volts. Let's see what happens. You can see that on the secondary the voltage slowly slowly goes up that means that this capacitor is charged via this uh, diode and now we are on 147 volts of course the energy that is present here uh, is tiny because we have a tiny transformer anyway Let's see what happens when we change the frequency and that's say the whole idea of this video. Put down the camera. I'm now going to turn the frequency knob of the uh, square wave generator. So it's now 13 kilohertz. That's the best frequency where this uh, a transformer originally made for 230 volts at 50 Hertz uh, gives out the best high voltage. So I'm going to change now the frequency to a lower frequency. Now we are on 6 kilohertz approximately and well what I wanted to show is this. You can surely see that changing the frequency that drives the transistor, that drives the transformer, has an enormous effect on the maximum output voltage. So I now go again back to 13 kilohertz approximately. And you can surely see that the voltage goes up, up and up to say the maximum that is in this case 130 or somewhat 140 150 volts 150 volts so um key of it all is the frequency so for instance when you use this transformer in this test circuit this test circuit Does this this test circuit? Uh, you will surely find an other frequency where that transformer works best. Pen over somewhat, and this was more or less all to tell. Uh, and of course, I have many transformers here, quite a bunch of them. And you can say also do such a test with such a transformer. Uh, though when the core is very heavy, uh, the frequencies that will give out an ideal um, voltage will be much lower than say 10 kilohertz perhaps such a transformer performs best on 300 hertz and such a transformer perhaps works best on 800 hertz and this is a transformer from an old power supply uh, uh, when you look at the core, you have a kind of idea uh, where the best frequency will be. I only have uh, one minute. Thanks for watching. Waveform is uh, good. Quickly show the different frequencies that you can set. And here, of course, there are many other frequencies, uh, say, to test such a. Uh,
transformer on its best properties. In fact, on its resonance. Thanks for watching.